Mexico, a country known for ancient ruins, dazzling beaches and incredible cuisine. Today, the Bank of America has declared that the nation is on the brink of a lifetime opportunity as the country looks set to take on China in the manufacturing market. According to the bank, global supply chain crises, the country's free trade agreements and a breakdown of US-China relationships have resulted in Mexico's best growth opportunity for the next 10 years. Now, how competitive is Mexico compared to China? What does the future hold? Chapter 1 – China's Decline China as a business location has always presented issues. The nation's legal system, for example, often works against foreign companies. We also have the issue of intellectual property theft, where cases of large-scale cyber espionage conducted by the Chinese government are plentiful. Chinese hackers took trillions in intellectual property from about 30 multinational companies. China has also pressured foreign companies into sharing trade secrets and intellectual property with Chinese corporate partners. Despite these issues and the rising labor cost experienced in the last 10 years, China has been a great location for many companies, resulting in the phrase, made in China, being as common as can be. But the ongoing trade war with the US and the lack of improving relations has brought a significant deal of uncertainty and a risk to business with Chinese operations. According to the German Chamber of Commerce, in China only 55% of German companies plan to invest further in China, compared to 70% in earlier years. The main reasons were low expectations for market expansion, ongoing political tensions and China's self-reliant policies. Adding to this is the potential conflict between China and Taiwan. China sees Taiwan as a sacred and inseparable part of the mainland, even though Taiwan has its own political systems, institutions and administrations. An armed conflict is very unlikely, though it would be disastrous for businesses in China. What is more likely is a Chinese squeeze on the Taiwanese economy to force unification through, for example, hindering ships from entering Taiwan's ports. This year, 2023, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang pledged peaceful reunification as well as resolute steps to oppose Taiwan's independence. Taiwan reports record number of Chinese warships in waters around the island. As China's grip on manufacturing is easing and sanctions are standing strong, Mexico is placing itself as a contender for both foreign investments but also as competition, manufacturing-wise. Due to the long-time trade war between the US and China, the UN has estimated that Mexico has captured $27 billion worth of lost trade. This is the largest amount by any single country. Chapter 2 – Mexico's Potential Mexico is greatly benefiting from US-China tensions and the trend of diversifying from China, the latter being caused by the problematic zero-COVID policy in China. For North America, Mexico has a clear advantage as it has predictability as part of the supply chain. Germán Dominguez, president of the Mexico Sourcing Group, has stated this about moving production to Mexico. This is about competitive advantage. It's about supply chain flexibility. This is due to Mexico's location coupled with a skilled labor force. Being on the same continent is very beneficial for companies in the US, for example as goods can be put out on a truck in Mexico and reach anywhere in the country within five days. The term for moving production closer to their markets is called nearshoring and is what North American businesses are using Mexico for. Why nearshoring is closer than ever, how Mexico is becoming the next big thing in global markets. But this is not the only large advantage for North American businesses as Mexico has a trade agreement with Canada and the US called USMCA, or United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. Trade-wise, USMCA works much like the EU, with free movement of goods and services and removal of red tape. Red tape is procedures and regulations which must be followed before you can do something. For example, fill out a bunch of forms before you can send a shipment to another country. Currently, a multitude of companies are relocating or investing in Mexico. US automaker Ford opens $260 million campus in Mexico. And not just for Ford either, Volkswagen and Continental pledged major investments totaling nearly $1 billion and Nissan announced an investment of $700 million over the next three years. Other sectors like food, basic metals, mining and pharma are also projected to invest more in the country, nearshoring an opportunity to expand metals capacity in Mexico. 
Mexican economy minister Raquel Buenrostro Sanchez stated that more than 400 North American companies have the intention to carry out relocation process from Asia to Mexico, showing the confidence companies have in the nation. Mexico's foreign investment surges 48% as nearshoring booms. This article from Bloomberg illustrates the growth nearshoring has caused in Mexico. North American companies are not the only ones interested. Chinese firms have also shown interest. This is also due to Mexico's location, as Chinese firms are looking to gain access to North American markets. Due to the aforementioned trade war, Chinese exporters want to preserve their sales in the US and see Mexico as the way to achieve this. Alarmed by shipping chaos and geopolitical fractures, Exporters from China are setting up factories in Mexico to preserve their sales to the United States. Aside from its geographic location, Mexico also boasts other benefits. Manufacturing-wise, the nation has a highly skilled workforce that numbers 2.3 million people. The most common manufacturing industries include high-tech sectors like automotive, electronics, aerospace, and medical devices. Clothing and apparel are also common. Incentives introduced by the Mexican government, such as the IMEX program, which allowed for duty-free import of raw materials and components, are also very beneficial and makes manufacturing in Mexico more attractive. Another large positive is the expansive infrastructure in Mexico, as it has the largest extensive highway network in Latin America. The nation also has around 2,000 airports and railways connecting central Mexico to American border cities. The problem is that while Mexico is very attractive in North America and has therefore seen a large influx of investment and trade from North America, it is not so attractive to European and Asian markets. Mexico's strong location-based benefits really only apply to North America and China, which really only wants to continue trading with the US. With strong competition like India, Indonesia and Thailand, Mexico needs to up its game to compete in other markets. Chapter 3 what does the future hold? Though production is shifting, there is no new China for companies to go to. Various countries are great for small-scale production on different products, but no other country can handle the volume and variety China is currently producing. Still, production is shifting out of China and is likely to continue to do so for some time, but change will be slow. Building factories and adjusting to new environments is time-consuming and new problems always emerge, which takes up even more time. Apple's shift to production in India comes to mind. Apple's manufacturing shift to India hits stumbling blocks. The shift out of China will be very good for Mexico and will greatly boost its economy, but the North American nation cannot pick up all of the slack. One thing to note is that while nearshoring to Mexico is being widely discussed and done, it should be reflected in foreign direct investment data. But foreign direct investment in Mexico was largely flat from 2015 to 2022. It could be because the impact on foreign direct investment is lagged and the influx of new investment does not show yet. It could also be factors like the changing business climate or that the pandemic has postponed the move to Mexico.